What I've got planned to do is take you around and show you some of the bits and pieces that I've been doing up on level two over the last couple of weeks. Let's head over to the layout and I'll show you all the updates that I've made to date. You can see I've got my sound deadening material, that's the grey stuff. Uh, and then I've actually, because I'm on the main lines now, I'm actually using cork just to raise it a little bit to help to get that nice contour when I go to ballast. And then you'll see on this end over here, I've wired in, put the track work in for the crossover in front of the station and I've got another one that'll go in behind. So you can see there, all the track work's been laid. Now it's leading up to the station area. I've got track laid on both sides. Right now, I've got the platform screwed in place. I guess you can probably see on that side, it is quite close to the trains. I've done that on purpose. So I've tested a few trains there's a bit of movement there but even when it's right on this side it doesn't touch the platform and I've checked that with all the passengers and, and some of the freight as well so I'm quite happy with that so I've done all the track work right up to the end of the platform as you can see there and I've started to lay more cork bed leading up to finish off level two leading up and around to the helix this is where my next crossover will be after the station. And that's just to give me some variety uh, with operations. And as you can see, I've got up to this point here. This is the printouts from AnyRail that I use that sort of helps me measure and cut uh, my sub road bed and what I'm doing now, you know, obviously I've got that printout, I'll get some more printouts to finish that off, get the right board in place, cut it out and that'll come around. It'll be coming around, it'll still be on the incline and it'll be about a, a hundred millimetres uh, off level two. And then what that means is when it comes around to here for the helix, I can actually get rid of one of my tiers. As you can see over here with the first helix, I've had to use five tiers, but now that I've climbed up 100 millimeters uh, for the escarpment on level two, I'll only need four tiers on this helix that will be sitting over the top of this area right here. So next is the, um, the platform. So what I've done, and you can see here, I know it looks a bit shiny, don't pay any attention to that. This is just um, the primer that I've put on. I'll be rubbing it back, and you can sort of see up this end, I've started to rub it back, and obviously that is not the final colour, this is just to seal the wood. You can see at the moment, this will be the station, although I need to repaint it. Um, I'll have to check out. While in previous videos I mentioned I was modelling the Helensburg station, I just want to make sure expectations I couldn't fit it on the curve obviously the Helensburg station is on a bit of a curve I've had to make this one straight so what I'm calling this is the Helensburg like station but anyway that's the station main station that I'll be using because I've got the new table saw I was able to cut it to the width right here first up and then obviously go around and trim these edges the next aspect that I'll show you is I've actually got the southern end down here of level two all wired up to a bus wires. So I've got it in place, I've got it hooked up 
and I've got power and I can actually run trains all the way up to this platform. For powering the trains, there'll be two bus lines. So one bus line will do both the southern and the northern end of level two. And then there'll be a second bus line to do the branch line, which will come off there and along this wall for level two. But what I'll do, I'll take you down here. So this is where it all starts. Uh, for those that are not familiar, this is my custom made DCC cabinet box. Now what I've done is centralize a lot of my stuff. Top drawer here, this is all the power, the DC power requirements. So I've got my main uh, three level power supply, DC power supply there. Um, there's a whole bunch of distribution boxes over there for different parts. And obviously then on this side, I've got some buck converters that sort of lower the uh, DC voltage. So obviously I've got a, you know, a range of different DC voltages that I'm gonna need around the layout. And down here in the bottom drawer, this is all my power districts. So over on that far end, that's level one. As I said, I've mentioned three buses there. So one for the north side, one for the south southern side, and then the reverse loop in the middle there, right here. That's level two, as I just spoke about, where I'll have a bus line for the main lines, and then I'll have the branch line on a different DCC bus line. This one closest to us, that's for level three, soon to be built. Uh, again, that will have three. It'll have the main line, the branch line, and obviously there'll be another loop up there, black boxes there, they're all boosters, one for each level, eight amp each, so it's got some visuals, oh, apologise for the background noise, I've got a train turning on, but anyway this top section up here shows you the DC voltage that I'm running at and also the, the amount of amps, uh, one for my main 30 amp uh, it's a variable DC power supply, that was the big one you saw. And then that one down there is my secondary DC power supply. That would be mainly for my point motors, lighting, you know, all that extra auxiliary type stuff you might want to power on the layout. Down here you can see what I've done. I've got some visual, but also inside you may have noticed on my boards I had piezos, so I will get a sound and a visual if I have any shorts anywhere. So that will alert me to where I need to look for those issues. And obviously here I use the RR amp meters uh, to take the DCC voltage and amps being used on each of the levels. On each side of this DC cabinet is the, uh, obviously the power breakout areas. On the other side of this one it was the breakout areas for the level one. And then over here takes care of the main MRC wireless and that's this part here, this goes off to my MRC wireless. And right here you can see two main things at the moment. So also when I talked about my secondary DC, this is the level one, level two, level three outputs. Uh, they will mainly do my point motors. And then what you can see here is this is where I've hooked up level two on the main line. You can see there on the main line. So you can see that. And if I can sort of just follow that around, you can sort of see that goes up there. You can see it comes up here. And then I've got a breakout area here. So obviously it's got to power the southern side and the northern side. So I've got a couple of extra outputs there once I put in the northern DCC bus line as I progress up that side. But what you can see here is I've got it wired in. And what I do is put these little breakout connectors in when I need to draw power for the dropper wires. And that goes all the way around, follows to the southern end until it stops right here. And then obviously those wires you can see there, that's powering the viaduct area. And then obviously I've mentioned before, on that side of the viaduct, it's got a different DCC bus power source for level one and so I've insulated 
those tracks. So I've got the, the crossover here and I haven't actually cut these down yet but um, they're roughed in, they're all in place glued. You can see here I've got my super elevation. So this is the first time I've actually done it through a turnout so I was very nervous about that but when it all dried I did a whole bunch of testing. I did notice it was a little bit buckled and caused a, a few little issues here. What I did was just basically cut away, allowed it to lift itself, uh, correct itself and then what I did was then just dabbed glue and glued it in place. So it's not exactly on the cork, there is a bit of a space but the glue holds it in place now that it's level and it works really really well. I use these door hinges as my weights on the track. Um, why I use these things, I just find they just apply enough weight just to help settle the track into the glue but not fastening down every part of that track to the cork or to the, the underlay. Uh, you know, you, your bench work is never perfect so I sort of allow that uh, to work itself out and it sort of works pretty well with these type of weights. So what have I done over here? So yeah, with the crossovers, getting back to that, I'll put the point motors in. So I use the cobalt. I'm only using analog. I've decided all mine will be controlled by a panel of switches and not by my cab control. You see there, so from the DCC bus line where I connect all my dropper wires. Right now, I don't have power hooked to these point motors. But what I do is, if I need to change them, uh, they're a little bit different to the tortoise machines. Uh, these ones you can't switch them by hand. So what I do is I just come around with a nine volt battery and lock them in place uh, with these, you know, these temporary drop down wires until I actually hook it up. Uh, you see there, that's my polarity, my frog juicer, or my frogs are powered. So. If, if it's in reverse, the frog juicer will pick it up and switch it really, really quick. Work has taken up a lot of time, so I haven't progressed as far as I was hoping. I would have loved to have been completed all the way up to that side at least and while my next challenge after that will be then the second helix that will go from level two to level three this one's going to be an interesting one so it's almost going to be like a floating helix so i need to do some more bracing on the bottom of level one uh, and then i'm probably going to be using heavier duty supporting wood from that side over there to these support structures I've got there. So for now, I'm gonna continue laying my cork and track work all the way up to this end. And then obviously I need to get the sub road bed in place leading up to where then it cuts into on the way to the helix. 